Hey everyone, Sing here today in the Minecraft lab. And today we'll be talking about photosynthesis and cellular respiration. Photosynthesis, which takes in the place in the plant cell, and cellular respiration, which takes place mostly in the animal cell. Now, let's first take a look at cellular respiration. So let's go. And here we have the animal cell. But first, before we jump into cellular respiration, Let's first talk about the organelles of the animal cell. So first, we have the cell membrane. It's like the border crossing of a country. It controls what goes in and out of the cell. It also provides the cell with some protection. Next up, we have the cytoplasm, a jelly-like fluid substance that holds all the organelles inside the cell. And next up, we have the ribosome, which is either can be free-floating like this, or hanging onto the endoplasmic reticulum, which is ER for short. And these ribosomes produce proteins. And now back to the ER. So the ER, there's two kinds. The smooth ER, which has no ribosomes on it, and then the rough ER, which has ribosomes on it and these ERs help are like transport tunnels around the cell and now the thing in the middle getting surrounded by the ERs is the nucleus the control center of the cell helps control all the ongoing things of the cell including when it reproduces it has is it holds the genetic material now this green thing over here is the Golgi body. It helps package things into things called vesicles. So it helps package proteins, water, nutrients, and all sorts of stuff like that into these vesicles which have a membrane around it and holds it and transports it around the organ, sorry, around the cell. So it is like a U-Haul where it transports things all around the cell and transports everywhere, including in and out of the cell. Now moving on here, we here is the lysosome, where this is pretty much the recycling facility of the cell. It recycles the organelles that are dead. And over here is the vacuole. This is the storage facility of the cell. It holds water, nutrients, proteins, and all other sorts of things like that. And now, here we go. The last organelle, the mitochondria, the powerhouse of the cell, and the equation for cellular respiration, which happens in the mitochondria, is this C6H12O6, which is glucose plus 6O2, and those two reactants go into and produce 6 CO2 for and 6 H2O and 36 to 38 ATP. Now cellular respiration has four main steps. The first step is glycolysis. The second step is the preparatory reaction. The third step is the Krebs cycle. The fourth step is the ETC or electron transport chain. Now, like I said before, this entire process will produce between 36 to 38 ATP. This is around an average because sometimes things can happen and not you don't get your full amount of ATP. Now, there is one step in my in cellular restoration that does not take place in in the mitochondria. And that is glycolysis. So glycolysis actually starts in the cytoplasm right here. It starts with this one glucose molecule. And it, and it, it takes that glucose molecule and it breaks it apart into two phosphoglycerin aldehyde, PGAL for short. And during that process, it actually uses two ATPs. So, after this, the PGAL actually turns into pyruvate. Now, this change actually produces 2 ATP, 
and 1 NADH. Therefore, you get 2 ATP because 2 ATP was used on the breaking apart of the glucose molecule. There was also 2 NADH and 2 pyruvate pro produced. This is all doubled because don't forget that there were 2 PGAL. Now let's go into the mitochondria to see how the preparatory reaction starts. Whoop. And here we are inside the mitochondria. Now first before we jump into how the preparatory reaction was, let's talk about structure. So here on outside, this dark orange wall is the mitochondria membrane just now where you saw what you saw was also the mitochondria membrane, but now we are the inside of it. So this red wave part, sometimes you can see these in photos of cross sections of the mitochondria. This is called the cristae. And inside of this cristae is called the matrix. No, I'm not talking about the movie. I'm talking about the mitochondria's matrix. And now in between the cristae and the mitochondria membrane is the inner membrane space. So it's pretty much this just the space in between the cristae and the mitochondria membrane. Now let's get back to the preparatory reaction. This step helps the pyruvate enter the Krebs cycle. To prepare the pyruvate to enter the pri um, sorry to enter the Krebs cycle, the pyruvate gets oxidized. And therefore, forming a, a, a acetyl. Now, this oxidation process produces a byproduct of CO2. After this, form a sulfur group and a coenzyme called coenzyme A, as you see here, attaches itself to the <coughs> acetyl. This form, this forms. A acetyl CoA. Now, which is a two carbon compound. Now, during this step, two NADH is produced as a byproduct. Now, probably at this point, you're wondering why there's so much NADH. What is NH NADH doing? What is it? it is a <coughs> electron carrier, and it will be used at the end of cellular respiration at the electron train chain sorry so you can wait for that to see what nadh does all right next up we have the krebs cycle the krebs cycle also takes place in the matrix of the mitochondria now the acetyl coa from the previous step catalyzes with different enzymes to merge with the oxalytic acidic acid right here and this forms citric acid the stuff in lemons oranges and in sour candy and so after becoming citric acid which is a six carbon compound the cycle cleaves off two carbons to, this is all to return back to the original state of oxaloacetic acid so that it can redo the cycle again. That's why it's called the citric acid cycle. It keeps repeating itself. Now, during this process of cleaving off to CO2, this reduces NAD plus to NADH. It also reduces FAD to FADH. Two. So each time a pi a acetyl goes through three NADH, one ATP, and one FADH2 is produced. Now this step in all produces six NADH, two ATP, and two FADH2. Now next up the step next step in cell respiration is the one that produces the most amount of ATP. 
All right. Here we are. The electron transport chain, in my opinion, is one of the coolest parts of the salary respiration process. Now, this happens in the matrix of the mitochondria and the inner membrane space. This process starts off with the oxidization of NADH and FADH2. And this forms FAD and NAD plus to be used in the Krebs cycle again. This also produces hydrogen ions and electrons. Now these use, are used in the other part of the, the chain. As you can see here, these big bits here are protein complexes and every time the electron goes past its them at a high energy state it releases energy therefore pumping a hydrogen from the matrix side of the mitochondria into the inner membrane space this creates a this creates a a hydrogen ion gradient therefore these hydrogen ions want to get back into the matrix but before we get too ahead of ourselves you may be wondering where are these electrons coming from so the electrons are actually coming from the FADH and the sorry FADH2 and the NADH that was oxidized the electrons are used in here to pump the hydrogen from one side to the other therefore making a like I said concentration gradient of hydrogen ions therefore this is where the ATP synthase comes in now you can think the AP of the ATP synthase as a big turbine and I can show you how it is like a turbine with this flick of the switch as you can see it rotates as the hydrogen ions come back in it rotates and in this housing area the ATP synthesis housing area is ADP and P phosphate groups P phosphate groups and when this thing rotates it smushes the ADP and P together to form ATP which if you didn't know stands for adenosine triphosphate now when these guys smushes together it smushes and like I said it forms ATP now you may be wondering with this electron over here as it goes down and down and down from have super high to a lower energy state it's used to make H2O so two hydrogen ions and half an oxygen molecule are used with electron to form H2O Overall, around 10 NADH and 2 FAD2 goes into the electron transport chain, which is, and it gets oxidized, and a total around 34 ATP is produced. Now, another thing about this housing is that in three different areas around this axle in the housing, this ATP gets made. So, imagine this AT, this axle here isn't actually this nice smooth it's very rigid and in three different areas around it ADP P and phosphate groups ADP and phosphate groups and then smush together to form ATP now the FADH and the two and the FADH2 for each of the NADH three ADP is made from it and two fa and two atp is made from the fadh2 so now like i was saying before there's 10 nadh and two fadh2 that goes into the electron transport chain so in total the nadh produces 30 atp and the fadh2 produces four of that of the 34 ATP. 
Now, this is the cellular respiration chain. So once again, there's four steps. First step, glycolysis. Second step, the preparatory reaction. Third step, the Krebs cycle. And the fourth step, the electron transport chain. Now, let's say goodbye to this wonderful process and head back to the lab. Whoop. And here we are back in the lab. Now this time we're going to take a look at a plant cell to take a look at photosynthesis. Now here we go. And here it is, the plant cell. Now take it all in. Now you may notice a few slightly different things about this plant cell compared to the animal cell. And if you thought that the vacuum is so way bigger than the animal cell, you would be right. Because in the plant cell, the vacuum is a lot larger. And now, there's also a few other differences. For example, this outer wall here, this lighted green, is the cell wall. And the cell wall is a rigid wall-like membrane that also protects and holds gives shape to the plant cell now there's one more last difference between the animal cell and this plant cell and that is the chloroplast and the chloroplast is where photosynthesis takes place and so let's take one closer look into photosynthesis. And here we are inside the chloroplast. Now, before we jump into the processes of photosynthesis, let me tell you about the structure of the chloroplast. Now, the chloroplast, the emerald on the outside is, well, the green, sorry, dark layer, green, bright layer on the outside is the chloroplast membrane and on the inside here this fluid around these big stacks like pancakes are the, is called the stroma and these pancakes like stacks is called the thylakoid and inside the thylakoid the middle the inside is the, called the lumen so before we jump into the two processes of photosynthesis let's talk about what photosynthesis products and reactants so photosynthesis takes co2 sunlight and h2o and makes it into o2 and glucose or sugar in other words and so let's go take a look All right, let's go take a look at the first process, well, first part of photosynthesis. And it is called the light reaction. It takes place in the thylakoid and the thylakoid membrane. So here is the thylakoid membrane and on it is photosystem 2 that goes first and photosystem 1 is over here. Now photosystem 2. It's called photosystem 2, although it goes first because it was found second and photosystem 1 was found first. And then along between these two photosystems are protein complexes that, like cell respiration, take the high energy of an electron, takes it, and pumps electrons across from this time from the stroma into the lumen. So it does that two times here with these two protein complexes and this last one here also takes the energy but just transfers it over to photosystem one. Now in these photosystems there is a pigment and so in photosystem two it's called pigment 6a. P stands for pigment, 6a stands for nanometers, the wavelength of light it lets it best lights lets in and so let's take a look 
And what happens when an electron from H2O? So a very surprising thing is that the photosystem 2, this P680, is a extremely good oxidizer. And so it even oxidizes H2O. And so that's the first step. That's how photosystem, sorry, how photosynthesis starts in light reaction. It takes H2O and oxidizes it and produces two hydrogen ions as a byproduct and a half an oxygen molecule. And so that's why, so after this is done twice, you get oxygen as your byproduct. Now these two hydrogen ions also apply to the ion, sorry, <coughs> proton gradient get, gets formed by the pumping of the hydrogens from the stroma into the dilocoid lumen. Now, as the electron comes into from the H2O, it's at a low energy state, and then sunlight comes and energizes it, and in the photosystem, it gets transported to fuel via tin. This is a protein that can hold it, and then from there, from the fuel fire tin, it gets transported to the plastoquinin, which is a protein complex that takes that some of the energy from the electron and pumps it across the gradient, across sorry, the membrane into forming the gradient. Same with the cytochrome complex, it does the same exact thing, pumps it across the membrane, and then it transfers the electron over to the plastocyanin. As you can see here, transfer over. And from the plastocyanin, it gets transferred to photosystem one. And now in photosystem one, it is the electron is at a low energy state. So it once again P700 pigment, P stands for pigment, 700 for nanometers of the wave, the light waves that it lets in. It energizes the electron up to a high energy state and passes on to the ferrodoxin complex. And in the ferrodoxin complex, it from there passes on, it reduces the energy and passes on to a, another protein complex where NADP plus is reduced to NADPH. Now, let's go back to this grade, proton gradient of high energy protons. Like cellular spritz, they want to get, they want to get out. They want to even out. And so the ATP synthase once again comes into play. And once again, it takes the ADP and phosphate groups are inside this housing. And when the protons come through, this thing spins like a turbine and smushes ADP into phosphate groups to make ATP, adenosine triphosphate. And so this is pretty much photosynthesis but wait sorry there's one more step that is the Colvin cycle where ATP and the NADPH that was produced here from the electron is used so let's go over there right now to the Colvin cycle all right here we are the Colvin cycle so, in the Colvin cycle, it takes place in the stroma of the chloroplast. And so, it takes CO2 and reacts it with RUBP, which is ribulose biphosphate. And these react together to form P-gal, which is over here. However, the cycle needs 10 P-gal to remake the RUBP and so after a while it does this and so whatever RUB sorry P gal that it does not use forms into glucose and you need two P gal to form into glucose now this reaction here I forgot to mention actually uses up ATP and NADPH to do this reaction now, this is the entire process of photosynthesis, the two processes, the light reaction, 
where with the electron transport train transporting it along and the Calvin cycle over here where the CL2 gets used up to form PGAL. And now let's go back to the lab. Whoop. And let's take let's compare these two processes. Now up over here I have a little bit of a Venn diagram. As you can see, photosynthesis is on the left and cellular respiration is on the right. So let's start with the similarities. They both are crucial processes for the cells. That's right. Without these processes, the cells could not have energy and could not live. Now the second thing here is they both produce and consume water, glucose, oxygen, and carbon dioxide. That is correct. Yes, they both produce or consume these molecules right here. <clears throat> now, next up is if a cell has both cell respiration and photosynthesis, they help supply e they help supply each other. For example, for example, glucose from glycolysis, um, glucose gly glycolysis needs glucose, and therefore photosynthesis helps supply it with glucose. And another example is the HDO needed for the light reaction. That is comes from cellular respiration. And the last summary, similar to the first one that I said, is that they are necessary for the cells survival. Alright, now let's go over for this is some of the similar some of the own things here is that it takes place in the plant cell. Cellular respiration does not take place in the plant cell. Only photosynthesis takes place in the plant cell. However, photosynth however, cellular respiration does take place in the plant cell. Now, next up is the whole process takes place in the chloroplast. It does not take one step does not take place in the cytoplasm like cellular respiration. And the last one is here, it, it needs sunlight. Yes, photosynthesis needs sunlight to work. Without it, it cannot energize the electrons. Alright, now moving on to the side of the cell respiration. Here, the first thing is it generally takes place in the animal cell. That is correct. The animal cell mostly takes place in the animal cell. Now, the next thing is most of the process takes place in the mitochondria, the powerhouse of the cell. Anyway. So yes, it takes mostly in the in the mitochondria, except for glycolysis, which once again takes place in the cytoplasm. All right, so let's go head back to the lab here, wrap things up here. Don't forget, cellular respiration and photosynthesis are crucial, crucial processes for cells. Without it, they would most likely die. And that's it for today. Thanks so much. And see you guys next time.